Hello and welcome to another edition of History Science Fiber. Today we are going to be looking at the rich Rufusy Browns of Usnia, also known as Old Man's Beard. Now for this episode, I really wanted to try and get a handle on identifying Usnia down to the species level, but I pretty much failed as Usnia taxonomy, it turns out, is pretty hard. But I can tell you that this is one of the most common lichens in the world. Now, if you're looking for an easy way to tell pretty much right away whether or not you've got Usnia, pick it up, take a length of it, and slowly pull it apart. And if it has a white inner core, almost like a string that is stretchy when it's wet, you definitely have Usnia. This is a super easy way to identify it in the field. This form of branching is called fruticose, and usnia can grow either in tufts or in pendulous lengths. Now, I have heard that different usnia can dye different shades of rich brown, so I decided to see if I could gather usnia from two different locations and compare the colors. So I took to the fairies and collected two fairly similar usnias from here on the beautiful west coast of British Columbia. My first stop was Campbell River on Vancouver Island and then on to Seashelt on the Sunshine Coast. Both In both of these locations, I found trees covered in usnia growing in these long trailing clumps. But I left everything growing where I found it and instead salvaged it very easily on the ground along some gravel roads. I love combining hiking, travel, and dying. It's just the best. Now, once I got them home, I wanted to make sure I kept as many variables the same as I could to compare the colors. So I made sure first off that I was using the same weight of usnia for each of the dye pods and weight of wool. Here the wool was totally unmordanted. I simply wound off two identical hanks at about 11 grams or 0.4 ounces of the same skein wool and left them to soak in water. For many lichens, you do not need to morden, and in fact, mordanting can alter or even inhibit the uptake of color from lichens. For the usnia, I first cleaned it by removing as much of the random vegetable matter as I could, rinsed it, and dried it. I then weighed out 27 grams, or about 0.94 ounces of each, before chopping it up. So why 27 grams? Because that was the lightest weight I collected in one of the locations, so to keep them the same. And plus, I did want to roughly have about 3 to 1 for weight of lichen to fiber. So 3 to 1 worked out. Now I wanted to put the two lichens into two separate jars, but first I wanted to put it into these paint mesh bags. Now these are inexpensive and available at most paint stores. Their original purpose is to filter out clumps of paint, but they are super for dyeing and can be easily rinsed and reused. It's a really easy and lazy way to keep your fiber and your dye material separated. So here I added one to one liter mesh bag into my jar. I then added the lichen and labeled them one Campbell River and one Seashell and added the same amount of water, about two liters or half a gallon. I then proceeded to simmer each at the same time using a double boiler method for one hour. After the hour was up, I let it cool down and then I added the hank into each jar. I then simmered the wool again, being careful not to let the liquid into the jars boil. The wool was stirred about every 15 minutes or so for the hour and then it was left to cool overnight. I, I had a look in the morning and the wool was a beautiful rich brown. The Campbell River one looked slightly darker, but all in all, I would say a very similar color. So in short, use three to one, always collect on the ground. You don't need to morden. Simmer your lichen for an hour, simmer your wool for an hour, let it cool overnight. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos.